Things aforesaid shall receive you, so thirst and pain are prepared for them. And the Lord is letting us know, listen, it's done. It's not, it, it's nothing that you can change about it. It's, it's already sealed. That's the faith. Just like the Lord has prepared everlasting life for the ones who's going to follow the Son of Christ. The same thing on the other side about those who have rejected the Lord. They are going to receive damnation and there's nothing that anybody can do about it. Just like when you go in the earlier chapters when you talk about those who got the victory, how it can't be changed, and how no one is going to be able to do this or, 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 or change the verdict. The verdicts are already set. It's just a matter of those things on the hand in the realm of the Lord. What we committed to do is keep his commandments and apply Christ. And those who don't do that have chosen what they wanted. It's a choice. So let's jump one chapter over to um, chapter 9. Stay in 2nd second, Ephesus second and leave chapter 8. We're going to jump to chapter 9. And let's read on, start at 17. And it's still talking about the same exact analogy. 2nd Ezra 9, verse 17. And he answered me, saying, Like as the field is, so is also the seed. As the flowers be, such are the colors also. Such as the workman is, such also is the work. And as the husbandman is himself, so is his husbandry also. For it was the time of the world. And now, when I prepared the world, which was not yet made, even for them to dwell in that now live, no man spake against me. So the Lord explained that there was a time when I was preparing the world, which you all now live in. And when I did that, there was no man to speak against me. Is that true now? No. Every time you turn around, somebody up in the most high face mm -hmm. talking about how he's wrong, they're right, and he don't know nothing. Then you have other people talking about he don't even exist. Mm -hmm. Then other people talking about he exists, but I hate him. And they say that with their actions more than their tongue. But he said there was a time when there was this world wasn't even made. And I made it for them that's now living in it to be here. Read. For then everyone obeyed, but now the manners of them which are created in this world that is made are corrupted by a perpetual seed and by a law which is unsearchable, rid themselves. So now times are changed. This world is corrupted, and every soul you turn around and look at is raising up against the Heavenly Father and speaking against His Word, and it's a corrupt, it's corrupted by a perpetual seed. One generation just continually worse than the last. Read. So I considered the world, and behold, there was peril because of the devices that would come into it. So now you look at all the devices and all the evil and all the sins that were in the world, and the Lord is saying it's a perilous world. There are dangers and perils that came into this world because of the evils of man. Read. And I saw... And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. So the Heavenly Father, when he saw the corruption that was in the world, he said, I took a grape of the cluster to save it. Have you ever seen a cluster of grapes? Some of y'all have, have seen a cluster of grapes outside of the supermarket. But even if y'all saw a cluster of grapes in the supermarket, you take it up, mm -hmm. it's full of grapes. Mm -hmm. It might have 50, 35, how many depending on how big the cluster is. Now, how would you feel if somebody says, okay, out of this cluster, I'm going to take one grape, I'm throwing away the rest. That's what the Heavenly Father said. Mm -hmm. He said, the world is so corrupt that when I take this cluster of grapes, I'm going to take one grape of the cluster, and the rest is going to have to be discarded. Let's read it. Um, verse, verse 21 again. 21. And I saw and spared it greatly, and have kept me a grape of the cluster and a plant of a great people. Read. Let the multitude perish then, which was born in vain, and let my grape be kept, and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect. So the Heavenly Father explains, when he plucks that grape, he said, let the multitude perish that was born in vain. Because he said, everything else that was born, you were born in vain. 
You were born for nothing. It's like you never even were here. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to take this grape, and with great labor, I'm going to make it perfect. And that's what happens with the elect. With great labor, the Heavenly Father is whipping us. He's hitting us with stripes. He's hitting us with affliction. He's putting us through the furnace of adversity so that we can purge out those old men and old women until he has that refined gold in his hand. That's the great labor. For with great labor, the Heavenly Father has made this perfect. Read. Oh, I'm sorry. Now, that was the last part. For with great labor, he made it perfect. And that's what we're, that's what we're here to be. We're here to be the followers of the Heavenly Father in Christ. That's what we're supposed to be. We're supposed to enter into that straight gate that the scriptures tell us about. And that's where we're supposed to live. Go to the book of Matthew, chapter 7. And we're coming near the end. But the main point now is the scriptures talk about that seed being saved. The scriptures talk about that one grape of a cluster. So now that it's talking about that one grape of a cluster... Let's see who that one grip of a cluster is. What are they going to be doing that's so different than the rest of the world? Matthew chapter 7 and verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go in thereat. So that's the multitude that was born in vain. That's the multitude that was born in vain. That's the multitude that are going forth to perish. That's the multitude that had liberty and hated the laws of the Most High, that despite to the spirit of grace, would not be reproved, would not be corrected by his laws, that heaped to themselves teachers having itching ears, and said that there is no God. And then saw the ones that were serving the Lord and persecuted them. So it's telling you right there, that enter ye in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Didn't say a few, it said many. And what is that? Religion, politics, sorceries, witchcraft, idolatries, fornications, all the things that this world is made up of. Your own mind. Oh, that's number one. Your own mind. That's what this world is made up of. So when people are going forth headlong into those things, they're on that wide path that leads to destruction. I'm my own man. Well, guess what? You and a, on a boat with 100 million other people, that's their own man. I'm my own woman. You on that same ship, on that same cruise, with 100 million people just like you. I'm an individual. Well, you down with a whole bunch of individuals that's about to go to destruction. Continue, verse 14. Because straight is the gate, and now is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. It says, because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. So why are so many walking in that path of destruction? Why is somebody walking in that wide path of destruction? There's a reason why. Because the straight gate is narrow, and few there be that find it. Why is it few there be that find it? Because there's only one way to get through it. you either coming through Christ, or you ain't coming at all. Yeah. And the only way to come through that gate is not just through Christ. It's through repentance mm -hmm. in Christ. But I thought you could just call the name of the Lord. <clears throat> Why callest thou me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Luke 6 and 46. So that's the answer. Because if you just call the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. No. You have to call the name of the Lord when you're doing the things that he told you to do. That's what it's about. It's about repentance. Did you have anything there? John. Yeah, and also, when Christ says, few that be that find it, it's not like Christ's word is uh, um, a small and a rarity is, is something that you can't get because Christ told his servants to go and preach in all nations, lands, and on the mountaintops and everything. But the thing is, you don't want to choose it. And you like, instead of Ezra, you despise the Most High and the Most High's words, which is what Christ spoke. So, 
I'll end in um, 2 Ezra 7. Ezra's at the book of the day. Second Ezra 7, because we're going to read about that straight gate again. We're still reading about that straight gate. And this is really where we're in. Second Ezra chapter 7. And let's start at verse 6. Second Ezra 7 and 6. And we're going to read, this is the straight gate that the Lord Jesus Christ spake about. There is also another thing. A city is builded and set upon a broad field, and is full of all good things. So what is that city? The kingdom. The kingdom of heaven. It's set upon a field and full of all good things. Read. The entrance thereof is narrow. Why is it narrow? Because it's a straight gate. Mm -hmm. The entrance thereof is narrow. Read. And is set in a dangerous place to fall. Like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. So both sides is destruction. Mm -hmm. You can either go into that deep water and drown or you can go into that fire and burn up. Both paths is destruction. And there's only one way in and that's the straight gate. Read. And one only path between them both. Even between the fire and the water. So small that there could but one man go there at once. So only one person is going at a time. You can't bring nobody with you. Nobody can bring you with them. You can't carry nobody on your shoulders. You can't take wife, mother, brother, sister, or children. One person alone by yourself on that path to that city. Read. If this city were now given unto a man for an inheritance, if he shall never pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance? So how are we going to receive and be worthy of the blessings that are in that city if we're not willing to walk that path between those two destructions. If we're not brave enough and bold enough to be followers of the Heavenly Father in Christ and walk that path between that fire and water. Read. And I said, It is so, Lord. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Israel's portion. Continue. Because for their sakes I made the world, and when Adam transgressed my statutes, then was decreed that now is done. So it, the world wasn't always as it is right now. The world wasn't full of sin and wickedness and evil. And the entrances into the former world were wide and broad. Mm -hmm. But after Adam transgressed, it became narrow because the world became full of dangers, perils, evils, and sin. Read. Because for their, excuse me, verse 12, then were the entrances of this world made narrow full of sorrow and travail. They are but few and evil, full of perils and very painful. So now, the pains that are in the world now, they weren't always there. The pains, the suffering, the sorrow of death, that wasn't always from the beginning. But now those things are entered into the world, and now we suffer those things. Read. For the entrances of the elder world were wide and sure, and brought immortal fruit. Right. If then they that live labor... Now, take your time on verse 14. If then they that live labor not to enter these straight and vain things, they can never receive those that are laid up for them. So now that's the point. It doesn't matter that the world is full of wickedness and evil and sin and death and pain and suffering. Because it explains that if we ever want to get into that city... We have to be willing to endure those pains and we have to be willing to endure those narrow things so that we can inherit the broad. That is the straight gate that we're supposed to enter into. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be that go in thereat. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth to life, and few there be that go in and few there be that find it. But just because you find it, now what do you have to do? You have to pick up your cross daily and walk that path between that fire and water towards that kingdom of heaven, towards that city that's prepared for you, towards that eternal treasure that's prepared for you to receive that gift and that promise of eternal life. Because there are going to be many that are wise that walk that path to the end, but there are going to be many that's foolish that lose themselves along the way.